And year 2000, Harvard study again. I haven't really been there that year. Metro Manila is the fastest growing <coughs> metropolis in the world. 20, 60 persons per hour, year 2000 study. 60 persons per hour. So, uh, and Delhi was only 47 persons per hour. I think London, Paris, New York was only five persons per hour. And Moscow was negative two per hour. And you can see the, the we should really keep updating our plans, not just every five years, but even every year. And, and in rapidly growing cities, the treating the city is not just so many kilometers of roads, uh, hectares of land, but it's really the people. And you can compare a rapidly growing city like uh, a monster, growing in size and complexity. And the urban managers, they should know how to, how, how, how to dance with that monster growing in size and complexity. But if you just do regulate, 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 it's not going to function properly. And in the 1900s, when Birmingham Plan Manila, the movement was City Beautiful Movement. And then City Efficient Movement. Uh, city Efficient, uh, City Efficient, City Beautiful, City Efficient. And I think for now, both of them are not there. And why the amplification of our cities? There's so much amplification of our city because the ones deciding on the built environment are not urban planners, it's not, it's not architects, it's politicians, contractors, and for some reason, we all to respect lawyers. And, and if you compare the city to a human body, the central business districts are the heart of the city. The roads and the waterways are the arteries. And the open spaces are the lungs of the city. So you compare our Metro Manila to a human body, I think it needs a heart bypass uh, or a heart transplant or whatever. It's suffering because it lost the lungs of the city, the open spaces. And it, it's really uh, not sustainable anymore. Next slide. So uh, this is the Philippines. You can see uh, Imperial Manila, the only one lighted. The rest of the country has no lights. Primus, primate city, primacy is the, the largest city in the country. It's more than 10 times the second largest city. It's not balanced. It's not equitable. So even when I was a student and uh, working on Metro Plan Manila and the National Physical Development Plan, our proposals then, in the mid-70s, was develop urban growth centers outside Metro Manila as counter magnets to the rapid growth of Metro Manila. So in Metro Manila, what do we have? Centers of government, education, religion, business, all of it. So if something happens that, God forbid, the, the big earthquake, it will probably take 10 years to reconstruct Metro Manila. So I'm encouraging people to really maybe look at the provinces as a, for business continuity as well. Next slide. So this is... Uh, uh, we drew this, the Central Business Districts in Metro Manila. The EDSA corridor is supposed to be a transportation corridor. And what has happened, it became a shopping mall corridor, destination, and so on. And constricted by the gated military camps and gated communities. It's a no-brainer. You don't have to be an urban planner to analyze it. Next slide. So the skyline of, you can see like Makati above, and Ortigas, and Manila skyline. Uh, the first one above, can you look at Makati? Nice poster, the previous one. So you have here the high-rise buildings, concentration of jobs and economic activity, surrounded by the low-density gated communities, the intramuruses of today. So that if you are an employee of Makati, but you don't live there, you're spending two to five hours a day going there. And I computed 48,000 hours, one hours, if you have a 40 years of economic life. And that's not being sustainable. So we need 
higher be capacity vehicles to get through the limited access. So if Central Business District is uh, the heart of the city, so the arteries going to here uh, are all clogged. Are all clogged. So that explains it. If you have Manhattan, Singapore, Tokyo, Hong Kong, London, Paris, New York, every 70 meters is an access road. Around Ortigas Center and, and Makati Central Business District, because of the walls of the subdivision, you have to go around sometimes two kilometers to be able to enter. So this is uh, Guadalupe. And it's supposed to be structurally retrofitted. But Public Works and MMDA are arguing. Public Works wants to repair it now. MMDA refused to get it done. But if a big earthquake happens, I hope you are not there. Guadalupe Bridge. Next slide. So uh, this one is pedestrian share in road accidents. The Philippines is the third worst. The worst is India, in Calcutta, and Bangladesh, then the Philippines. We have the distinction of the worst number of accidents for pedestrians. Did you see it? You cross the street, you run for your life. As in the world, you, you hit the curb, all the vehicles stop. Next slide. So, democratic streets do anything. Next slide. Well, yeah. So, what na. Traffic is not fatal. Kaya nilagay dito, walang ta tawiran, nakakamatay. So it's fatal. It's in the MMD design. Yeah. Next slide. Ayala Edsa. I used to be chief architect of Ayala. And when I worked with Ayala, I, I pointed at all the, this, all the imperfections of the plan also. <laughs> like, uh, there are 13 stations along Edsa. Anywhere in the world, when you have a transit station, MRT, subways, and so on. You surround it with higher density development so that you have more people within walkable distance to the transit station. Our transit station in, along ETSA, it's how not to do it. Surrounded by gated military camps and gated subdivisions. Again, it's a good example of how not to do it. Planning is balanced. In Metro Manila, everything is not balanced. In Makati CBD, you have more jobs, no affordable housing. So it's not balanced. Uh, other parts of Metro Manila, like you, you can observe the traffic. Like more are going south in the evening, are going north, going home. Some of our cities are dormitories. Others are place to work. Because by design, our zoning code is obsolete also. And we have so many stupid, I'm sorry, not stupid, <laughs> obsolete laws that really make us as an inefficient city and less globally competitive. Next slide. Yeah, so here, Ortiga Center, the same. So all these high-rise buildings near your station, I prefer them because I will not come up. They may be aesthetically challenged, not as beautiful, not nice-looking buildings. But they have more people within walkable distance from the MRT. Next slide. Next slide. So it's, it's all along that side. Next slide. This one I have proposed. The American Corps of Engineers in 1945, before we became an independent country, they proposed Metro Manila to have 10 major roads and 6 circumferential roads, like green roads. Imagine. Metro Manila as a uh, half of wheel, and the radial roads are the spokes of the wheel, circumferential roads, the ring roads. EDSA was circumferential road number four, planned in 1945, built in 1954, 54 meters wide. Six, until now we haven't seen the light of day for circumferential road number six, and that was 70 years ago, before I was born. It remained a plan. So my proposal now is make 10 circumferential roads like linking Cavite and Bataan through a bridge or through a tunnel. So if you want to go to Subic from Cavite, you don't have to mess around with the traffic in Metro Manila. You just go straight. Then interconnect the cities that can become 
urban growth centers as growth ma uh, counter magnets to the attractiveness of Metro Manila. And I would also propose to link the whole Philippines with railways and bridges. It can be done. Railways and bridges. And uh, the one who manufactured Magler, the Germans, the Magler in Shanghai, they came to see me and they told me from, from Batanes to Holo, two hours by train. That's the Magler. And then the first state visit the president in, 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 in China, I proposed it to the Chinese and they were willing to fund it. Unfortunately, we have these political issues, so we follow. Mm -hmm. I thought of this because in 2006, during the 60th anniversary of the United Nations, I got an award in New York. They, they asked me to talk, and I said, let's interconnect the six continents of the world by bridges and tunnels. And people commented, oh, this crazy Filipino, what's he talking about? The next day, I was congratulated. The, the scientists, the planners, engineers, developers, they computed it. It was cheaper than the Gulf War. If we link together all the continents of the world. So with that inspiration, it should be easier to do it for the whole Philippines. And I started a long time ago, Gimeras and Iluilo and Negros. I had a proposal to interconnect them two bridges, but it was there was no political will to follow it up. Next slide. Okay, study San Juan City. Yeah, so San Juan actually, if you look at Metro Manila as a theoretical square, San Juan is right in the middle. And San Juan, people just pass through. Pollute San Juan, Quezon City going to Makati without spending anything. So the strategy is make San Juan, I told the mayor, pick their pockets before they leave. So let them spend in San Juan before they go home or before they go to Makati. And make it as attractive as possible. So I told you about uh, interconnected elevated walkways, interconnected elevated monorail to be connected with MRT EDSA and LRT Aurora. And because the San Juan is narrow roads. That's why again, uh, one reason why I support the UHAP is UHAP can go through the narrow roads and the private subdivisions of Green Hills. And, and we, have, we have so many um, best practice proposals there which the rest of the world has recognized. And I hope uh, future administrations and one will follow the, the plan we put forward. And, and looking at how 400 meter, uh, 400 meters from the transit station make them as walkable as possible. So that you guys be able to walk. Next slide. And like this one, existing station, uh, Jerry's Transit Today, Jerry's Transit of the Future. With elevated walkways under it also. Next slide. So, um, Annapolis Street today, Annapolis Street of the future, with a monorail elevated walkway. And I call this, we've been taking pictures of the ugliness of our cities, and we send architectural perspectives, I call them postcards from the future. So today, and a postcard from the future. And next slide. San Juan River today, San Juan River of the future, postcard from the future. And some selected projects we've done. So that was Rockwell in 1994. And look at Rockwell today. That's all about this way. In the architectural schools here, they taught us about the front facade, the back facade, the left side facade or elevation and the right side. I have more importantly, looking from the top, the open spaces, how the different buildings dialogue with each other, the open spaces and so on. For me, that's very important. So this is the fifth facade of Rockwell, and, and the highest value percentage. This is in, in Clark, the Emir of Kuwait, they hired us to do a, a global gateway across the, the airport. And the Emir of Kuwait committed here $3 billion that will create uh, 270,000 jobs. So again, the importance of mass transit from the conceptual planning. Next slide. So the major script, I showed this to Mayor Era. The major script, how it should look like. It's looking for sponsors now. Next slide. And Escolta, the development. Postcards in the future. 
So, uh, Pasig River tomorrow. We had a picture of how ugly it is today, and this is a postcard from the future. But Makati on the right, uh, Mandaluyong on the left. Next slide. So I think we all like to live in environment-friendly cities and com communities that are better connected, more accessible, more walkable and bikeable, safer, better lighted, more convenient, cleaner, with mi mixing income cross-generational mixed developments, integrating places to live, workshop and dine, learn and worship with healthcare, recreation and leisure, with 24-hour cycle activity centers. Uh, our first book sold out on the left. The one on the right is still available. And we've done work in 38 countries, 1,235 projects, 16 billion square meters of master plan land area, 12 million square meters of architecture interior design. Uh, we've been recognized with 200 awards internationally. And this is our team. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Architect Father Paul, for sharing your experience.